All right, what's up, YouTube? We're here to talk about WandaVision episode eight. And um, right off the bat, I just gotta say, <laughs> great job. Oh man, it was just such a good episode. You know, I am gonna do like the recap, but I just had to say like, it, this really tapped into sort of the emotional side of, of our girl Wanda and just the steps that she took in dealing with various various points of trauma and grief and you know how we got to this one division thing loved it loved it loved it you know it was it was a lot of exposition especially on um agatha's part but I thought it worked so well it had me kind of emotional yeah very satisfying ep episode very satisfying I was satisfied before I even saw the mid credit scene. And then I saw that and I was just like, it's on for episode nine. So I was wrong. I thought that episode eight would be, you know, the viral episode that everybody's talking about. I'm sure people will talk about this. Looks like episode nine is heating up to be the epic, epic episode. So let's just get into it. So we actually opened 1693 in Salem, Massachusetts. And our girl Agatha is, you know, being put put on trial by other witches. And basically, she has sort of the Doctor Strange kind of issue where, you know, she's learning spells and things way above her level. And so, you know, they're saying that um, you need to be punished for this. And she's like, mm, whatever, I can't help it if the powers bend to my will, like, pfft, whatever. I'm just that bitch, right? Um, <laughs> and so they all start like sending these like Tesseract blue rings at her, these streams at her, and she's like in pain and screaming. But then all of a sudden, somehow within her, little purple streams come out and counteract their streams and just make them old and they die. The main witch that was talking to her is her mother, she ends up killing her mother as well. So that's the beginning. And that's basically to show that Agatha, like I said, is that bitch. She's been that bitch for, what, 400 years now. And she knows all there is to know about the magic of witchery, right? So then we go back to where we left off last week, which is her keeping Wanda captive in her basement. And Wanda tries to use her powers and she says, oh, girl, don't you know your powers don't work down here? Like the person, don't you see all these runes on every wall? Um, the person that activates the runes is the one that has power, you know, in the room. So basically, you know, I've been patient with your little WandaVision thing, but really though, what I want <laughs> is to know how you did this. What did she say? She said first off that it was a definitely like a mind control spell that she had put on the town. And she's like, you know, you'd made this mind control thing and you had all these people like, you know, follow, you know, follow your story based on their story complex or whatever. And that's super impressive because you're doing it on autopilot and you know, it's amazing, right? Then she also talks about mutation Another spell she does <laughs> turns like a bug into a bird. And I guess that's to talk about how she, you know, mutated the town and the clothes and all this stuff, right? So she's just like, how did you do it? Like when I was pretending to be your brother, Pietro or Fietro, I thought that was kind of funny. You told me that, you know, all you felt was um, emptiness. You were alone. She was like, let's go back there. So from here on out, it's Agatha sort of following Wanda into various traumatic moments of her life. And I enjoyed this. She materializes different doors that represent, you know, where she, where Wanda was at the time. And I thought that that was very cool. However, I can't quite place where this sort of plot line or storyline feels familiar like, I could think of the series Watchmen, and there was an episode where she took the drugs, and then she was able to sort of live the life of um, one of her ancestors and get, you know, questions answered. And that was definitely different. It was um, a little bit more jarring and um, trippy. 
and uh, you know very more very very creative but this wandavision one is very familiar to um another story where somebody was trying to like pull information i almost want to say captain marvel hmm anyway <clears throat> the first little setting that they go to is her in sokovia when she was a little girl there we established that she had you know a loving family a mom and dad and then her brother and that Wanda was obsessed with sitcoms, specifically Dick Van Dyke, a certain episode about walnuts. And so, uh, you know, the family is watching and laughing, and then all of a sudden there's this bomb. Part, uh, part of the um, debris of the bomb uh, definitely engulfed her parents. And so her and Pietro were underneath this bed, and there was a Stark bomb that was um, just right in front of them. They got scared. And basically, she figured they that the bomb was basically a dud and that they were stuck under that bed for two days. However, Agatha kind of feels like she probably, you know, cast a protection spell and that protected her and her brother. She's like saying no, but Agatha is basically hinting that she has always had these Scarlet Witch powers, right? <clears throat> so next, we go to... <laughs> the time in the life when Strucker and Hydra got to Pietro and Wanda. And so she goes into this room and we see, we know it's a Mind Stone, right? But it was in Loki's staff still. And so they're like, you know, just go in and touch that. And then the dumbass person <laughs> behind the control room, he's like, nobody's ever touched it and come out alive. And then the guy's like, um, hello, you're still on speaker. So she hears that. They're like, go and touch that. And she's like, just touch it. And she walks towards it. And then the stone comes out of Loki's staff and like goes in front of her. And she's kind of looking into it. Does she touch it? I don't know. But she does little things. She does something. And then, you know, the blue breaks apart and you can see it's a yellow mind stone. And what's really cool is that she's looking deep into it and she sees like the silhouette of the Scarlet Witch in her, in her Scarlet Witch outfit coming down. And then she just passes out, right? Apparently the recording footage didn't get any of that because it just kind of cuts out when she touches the stone and then the next thing they see is that she passed out. So then we go to the um, Stark compound or stark estate or avengers compound whatever you want to call it homegirl is oh and i should say that basically after the experiment they put her in her little room and she's watching the brady bunch so um, when she's at the avengers compound avengers estate resort <laughs> whatever you want to call it she's watching malcolm in the middle vision comes through she said this is obviously like sort of right after ultron you know, he was watching TV with her and she's sad about her brother. And he's telling her that, you know, it, you know, we can't be just all sorrow. But we've got to find happiness and move on and all this stuff. He's trying to help her through her grief. And um, it works. And <clears throat> they start laughing at Malcolm in the middle. And they have this very cute, very awkward kind of like gaze, gazing into each other's eyes. And then catching themselves and just kind of like, I like you. It was really sweet. I thought it was really sweet. So after this, Agatha's like, okay, so, you know, you fall in love with Vision and everything. And then you have to kill him. And you wanted him back, right? And then she materializes the door and it goes into the sword, sword headquarters. And she's like, yeah, I wanted him back. So she goes into sword and she's basically just like, you know what? I want his body. Like, you know, when I came back, you know, where I dusted off, I was right next to him. I was holding Vision. She didn't say all that, but she was holding Vision when she dusted. So she's like, and his body wasn't there, and I know it's here. And, you know, I want his body. He deserves a funeral, at least. So does Black Widow. But hopefully we'll get that in her movie. So Hayward um, allows her to come through. I'm going to mention these little steps because they highly edited her footage, okay? <laughs> they were on Premiere Pro like, what? They're like, okay, you can go in. Wait, we have to buzz you in. She was like, that won't be necessary. <laughs> I don't even know if she said all that, but she did her scarlet with powers and opened the door, right? So she goes to um, Hayward's office and 
he's like, yeah, I mean, I know you wanted to see the body, so. <laughs> she goes to this area of his office and there's this big glass and you can see down that Vision has been completely disassembled. They got like arms on one table, his head on one table, a foot right here. It's just a mess. And for me, I'm like, Hayward, you are like the biggest, you're a bigger asshole than we ever thought. Because if you guys know that Vision and Scarlet Witch were together and they had a, like a loving relationship, why wouldn't you warn her that like his body is completely disassembled? Because at first she didn't even see it. And then they were, and then he was like, yeah, I mean, that's him. And then she's like, oh my God, what are you doing to him? You know, he's just basically like, oh, he's the most dangerous sentient weapon that we have. And, you know, we have to do some research on him and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, he's not a weapon. She's like, well, you know, let me, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you think you guys think you're doing. I want his body. He deserves a funeral, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, with your powers, like, yeah, right. We can't um, let you, you know, take him and then like resurrect him. And she's like, I can't even do that. Like, that's not what I came here to do. And, you know, words are exchanged. <laughs> she basically just kind of breaks the glass that's separating them. And then she flies down into the room and everybody gets all scared and they like pull out their guns and everything. And he's like, no, you know what? No, just let her, let her see him. And she um, goes to his head and she's like touching his head and she's like, I can't feel you. And she leaves. <laughs> so that footage that um, Hayward showed on episode four, was it? Where like, you know, she breaks in it wasn't quite a break in. She breaks the glass. I mean, she did, but you know, she flies down, but she didn't take his body. So after that, she gets into her car and she sees a little note on um, the passenger seat, right? So she goes to Westview, New Jersey, and she's driving through there. And then she goes to this um, empty lot. And the note that she had, I guess, basically has a floor plan for that lot or what they were going to what they were planning to do with that lot. I, I, I wasn't sure if they had like purchased the lot already and that was like literally going to be their dream or if that was just kind of like a basic floor plan for any kind of residence. I don't know. And she stands in the middle of the empty lot and she's crying. You know, that's a lot. Everything that we've gone through with. Wanda, that's a lot to happen to one person. <laughs> so, yeah, she's she's crying in her grief, in her sadness, in her anger, all this. She builds a hex, you know? You know, when she's done, the, the house is built and it's all in black and white. And also, while she's, you know, building everything, doing her matrix thing, she's building a vision. And um, the the from her red powers, the yellow from the Mind Stone actually builds vision, right? So what I thought was so sweet was, you know, vision kind of comes to, and then just the way that he looked at her, like, was just so sweet, like, just so loving and... Uh, it was just, it was, it was, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> it really was beautiful. And then she smiles at him. And like, that's the first time like that we've seen her smile. Well, not in the episode, um, but that's, you know, you figure it's been a long while since she smiled. So it was just so nice to see that. And he's like, Wanda, you know, welcome home. Should we stay in tonight? And they sit on the couch, and it's really, really cute, All right? Then Wanda shows up in that memory, and she sees, like, the studio audience. Everything is, is sort of real. She doesn't see the studio audience. She just sees the empty studio audience, and, and Agatha is in there. And then she hears her kids crying, and so she runs out, and she's on the street of Westview, like, in front of her house. And... Agatha is levitating up in the air. She's in there. She has her little, you know, her witch outfit on. 
She has like the um, purple, like mystical leashes. <laughs> she has um, Tommy and Billy captive. She's basically telling Wanda like, girl, you have no idea how dangerous you are. Like you're able to, you know, create, you know, you're, you're able to create whatever you want. And she's like, all this, you're able to create whatever you want and you're using it to create yourself making breakfast. Like, what a waste. She's like, what you're doing here is chaos magic. And that makes you a Scarlet Witch. And then it cuts. <laughs> but interestingly enough, it doesn't say please stand by. And I thought that that was interesting because it's been please stand by on every episode. So I wonder why they didn't have that. Because for a second, it didn't show it. And I was like, okay, it's not like over. Or, I, you know, I thought that maybe something else was going to happen. But then the credits came up. So I'm curious why it didn't say that. However, like I said, once those um, credits rolled, I was very satisfied with the episode. I thought it was very good, very um, emotional and real and just you know digging into the psyche digging deep into the psyche of you know our marvel character and a marvel character that's definitely sort of been undercut like all the grief that she's gone through all the loss it probably wouldn't have fit in like a civil war or an infinity war or anything like that but i'm glad that we had this show to really delve into all her loss and her you know mental state of mind right thought it was beautiful but then the mid credit scene, we have Hayward and he's talking to one of his um, peepers. Basically, he's like, you know, what? we've taken this thing apart and put it back together a million different times. And we've used all these different energy sources to try to, you know, boot it up. Never tried, you know, energy from the actual source. So basically when Wanda in episode, what was it, five... I think it was five when she came out of the hex and um, she gave them back their drone and had her Scarlet Witch powers on it. That is what they're using to power up Vision. And he's Grey Vision. And I suppose that there's some mind power energy in her Scarlet Witch energy. But I feel like them booting him up with pure scarlet witch energy is going to make him bad or make him you know a weapon for their use or for their benefit i just remember like watching that scene being like oh no no don't do this and so <laughs> episode nine what do we have here we have here, it's going to be a battle royale, motherfucker. Because look, we're going to have Wanda versus Agatha. I feel like we're going to have Vision versus Vision. And that's going to be kind of dope. Um, it's going to be good Vision versus bad Vision, right? Monica is going to be in play somewhere. Now that we know that Agatha was just kind of just powering a person to be Pietro. I don't think that Monica really has to worry about fighting him. I think Monica's just gonna bounce back and forth in between like fighting the Vision, fighting Agatha. I think that Billy is gonna be a big part of the battle. I think that he is going to um, be helping Wanda fight Agatha. Who else do we got? We got Wu somewhere in there. He's going to be doing stuff, you know. Um, I think that maybe he's going to just like hand on hand, hand to hand combat, take down Hayward. And we'll love to see it. Yeah, it's just going to be fight on fight on fight on fight. However, we still have some stuff that is supposed to happen. This big, you know, surprise guest reveal. Somebody said Al Pacino. I don't know. Al Pacino, that makes sense with what Paul Bettany said about somebody that he's been wanting to work with like his whole life. But I still feel like Mephisto is a little bit dark, um, especially given what we know now in this episode. But yeah, it's just going to be, it's on next week. I did have a couple questions though, okay? I guess my main question um, with this episode is if Vision was created 
so this vision that we know on WandaVision, if he was created solely out of Wanda's powers, because we always thought that he was the body that she took and just kind of reanimated. But now that we know that he's completely made up from her powers, I'm curious how he's able to object to her. Meaning, why would he ever have any questions about what's going on in the WandaVision? Why would he resist it? Why would he want answers? You know what I mean? So that was one question. The second question, it was Agatha all along again. Like, I don't understand how it was Agatha all along. If she's sitting there telling us that she was playing along with Wanda this whole time, buddying up to her this whole time, just so that she can get the information on how she did it. So I, I still am not very sure about what Agatha was doing all along. She basically confirmed that Wanda was doing all of this. So I, 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 I'm, con I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm confused about that, okay? I think that was all of my questions. Great episode though. One more episode to go. So that's it. I guess I'll see you next week. And uh, also there's going to be a little bit of pause in between this show and then Falcon and Winter Soldier and then Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki. Loki's not coming out until June now, which I'm kind of bummed because that's the one that I'm most excited for. But I think in the interim, I am going to kind of do some Marvel centric videos. I definitely, definitely need to rank my um, favorite Marvel movies. So that's something to look forward to. And I also want to do a video about the upcoming slate on Disney Plus and which ones I'm most excited for. So until then, guys, great show. Great show. Great show. Definitely redeemed itself from last week because I still am not a big fan of that episode. Peace.